really good. And a bit of trivia based on uh, um, the uh, Ensemble Iberica. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you for all your other comments this morning. Iberia is the name given by the ancient Greeks to the region now known as the Iberian Peninsula. However, Iberia was also the name of an ancient kingdom that is now known as Georgia. Oh, the plot thickens there. Anna, thank you so much. If you could get thank the um, link to your Portugal immersion experience to me in the private chat, I'll make sure everybody's got that before we finish today. James, see you next Monday. Thank you very much for your Always mindful migration. Uh, and that video of Nuno as well. Oh, my goodness. Um, and Simone, stick around. Don't go anywhere because we're going to be talking about your book in just a moment, which is Deconstructing Brazil Beyond Carnival, Soccer and Girls in Small Bikinis. Uh, looking forward to talking to you about this in just a moment. Yes. Yeah, so cheers, Anna. Cheers, James. And stick around, yes. Simone. Bye. 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 Simone, thank you for being yeah. here. What a fascinating name for a book. Uh, and thank you for joining us earlier than planned. Um, to chip no in to yeah, thank you so much. And some, some great insights from you from this particular point of view as a Brazilian now living in Portugal and also the author of Deconstructing Brazil, Beyond Carnival, Soccer and Girls in Small Bikinis. So before we come back to um, your, your particular life experience as a Brazilian person living in Portugal, um, this book might have something to do with that whole Portuguese-Brazilian connection and how Brazilians are perceived around the world. Could you tell us about the book? Yes, I would love to. It has been like a... Um long journey for me. Uh, Portugal is my sixth country. Wow. Uh, so I have lived in, in, in many other places. Uh, but my experience as a Brazilian abroad has always been um, with full of um, uh, stereotypes that I have to meet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to say. You know, as a, especially as a Brazilian woman. Uh, so it, I had this uh, this reaction to my uh, my uh, experience and people's stereotypes all my life basically yeah and i was so fed up with that <laughs> i was so tired of this uh, misconceptions and so on so that was my reaction the book was my reaction to uh, the following okay i know we are known by carnival soccer and, and girls in small bikinis but what is there more <laughs> What is there more about us uh, that I would like to tell people? So that that was a question that stayed with me for many, many years. And uh, for a period, I moved back to Brazil and I was um, doing intercultural training. I was helping foreigners oh, wow. coming to Brazil, trying to adapt and trying to understand our culture. So that kind of pushed me to... How am I go how am I going to explain our behavior to foreigners? And that I was kind of pushed pushed more into doing a proper research. Uh, so it was very very um, challenging to go back to the history books. I'm not a historian, uh, and and try to explain or justify some of our behavior. So that was that was my journey, uh, Carl. Justify, it's very justifying behavior, that's fantastic. Um, it, is a, it is available on Amazon and no doubt yeah. elsewhere too, but just to give everyone a reference point, because um, we know some people talking of buying from Portuguese businesses, I'm not sure, I don't know if there is a Portuguese bookshop uh, that would sell this book, but um, here it is on Amazon anyway, and we'll, we'll give the link to it. There it is, Deconstructing Brazil, Beyond Carnival, uh, Soccer and Girls in Small Bikinis. Very reasonably priced paperback, uh, and I'll put the link to it. Um, so yes, uh, explaining behaviour, as you put it, of the, of mm -hmm. the Brazilians. I mean, this is this is a problem, isn't it, for all cultures, really, uh, how, how we are portrayed overseas. Um, but you're so right. I mean, those three things that you've chosen there do seem to be um, uh, universal flavours about how people per perceive Brazil. And then in perhaps the last 
what the last five years, also the political temperature of Brazil is also a, an exportable stereotype, isn't it? With Bolsonaro yes. being likened as the Trump of, of Brazil mm -hmm. and so on. So why, why don't you, a bit like with the survey earlier on, you know, how dismal that was. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit more about what, what else there is to Brazil that people should know about be, beyond these stereotypes? Yeah, so I, 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 think I, I think I would choose to talk a little bit about the relationship between Brazil and Portugal because we are right. in Portugal, right? Yeah, yes, and that's where everything starts. Or Well, that's not what, where everything starts because uh, people think about Brazil. Okay, I, I would choose to talk about two perspectives about Brazil. One is a very uh, e uh, Eurocentric perspective. I mean, if you, if you stand in Europe and you look down to Brazil, you probably have a sense that Brazil is a continuation of Portugal because of the colonial relationship. So I want to, I want to question that a little bit. And the other perspective is like, if, we, if you look down in, uh, to uh, Brazil from an American perspective, you see Brazilians as just another Latino. Right. So these two um, ideas of Brazil um, has also kind of um, bothered me so, for so long, but I didn't know why. So, so I had to think a little bit deeper. So let, let's think about Brazil being as an extension of Portugal. You know, um, Portugal has been in Brazil for 500 years. But wait a second, there wasn't there anything in Brazil before the Portuguese came. Yes, there were. There was. I mean, we have a history of 12,000 years. And suddenly, because the Portuguese arrived, we are Portuguese. Yeah. And uh, another, uh, another aspect is this, is that the Portuguese, um, they were a very unique colonizers uh, in a sense that they, uh, when they came to uh, these colonies, they, they, uh, they have the idea of meeting with locals in a different way from the English, for yes, instance. Yes, yes, so, yes. so all this, all this um, uh, mixing with the native uh, in, uh, in indigenous people were intense. You know, in a, from the Brazilian perspective, the Portuguese coming with these boats to Brazil, just guys, first of all, you know, just yes. men. <laughs> and and, and uh, for a uh, uh, long time that was an intense mix between the Portuguese and the in indigenous um, um, women. Uh, yes. we, we have to say that we don't, we don't like to talk about this because that sounds a little bit not politically correct. And also the intense uh, influx of uh, Africans that the Portuguese uh, brought to Brazil. And just, uh, just to give you a comparison, there, there, there are more, there are, um, nine thousand, nine times more um, Africans in Brazil than in the U.S. that were brought from Africa, and there wow. is nine thousand um, more um, Africans coming to the U.S. than in the whole Spanish-speaking Latin America. So we have had the, mo the most intense uh, African uh, um, forced migration to, to Brazil. And that was you no know, thanks to the Portuguese, uh, then uh, thanks to the Portuguese way of handling business, because we're talking about uh, um, uh, slave trade. Uh, right. it's, it's a serious heavy thing that uh, people in Portugal don't like to talk so much about, uh, about sure. it. And, and, and we don't see it in the conversation, you don't hear so much about it. But I think that that is one of the main differences. Um, and we have this incredible mix you now for 200 years before the Portuguese found gold in Brazil. Uh, I mean, why did they go to Brazil? Let, so let me tell you a story that when the Portuguese came to, to Brazil, uh, like the, the Spanish people, they thought they would find gold right away. But the Spanish did. They found gold much earlier than the Portuguese. But they, they, it took a while in Brazil. So um, they found uh, um, an ink that comes from a tree. And the tree is called Brazil. This is why our name is Brazil. Yeah, yeah. So the Portuguese found that this ink 
uh, was very uh, valuable for you know, dyeing clothes and things in the old times here in, in Europe. Yeah. So that was the, the first uh, e uh, economic um, activity of the Portuguese in Brazil was actually coming from the Brazil tree. Anyway, but uh, from the, the ink, from the uh, tree called Brazil to the sugar cane and then to the cacao and all these activities, they were uh, very much um, monocultures. Yes. Uh, it means that you know the, you, you need land, uh, you need um, people working for you, but that it creates a huge social uh, distance between a landowner and ev everybody else that works for you. So I mean, this triangle, the social triangle where there's a huge amount of slave, former slaves, uh, in, indigenous people uh, in, in the bottom of this society. And just a few landowners have been like in, being printed in our um, society. And yes, uh, that was the implementation of the Portuguese colony system. So there is a bit of a kind of a historical love and hate between the Brazilians and, and Portuguese. <laughs> Thank you for that. Antonio F is commenting here. Um, Brazil was part of the Portuguese empire for just 315 years. Uh, and I think he's using the word just in, in relation to what you were saying before. You know, it's a funny thing, isn't it, when a country gets discovered, like it wasn't there before until it got <laughs> discovered by the people who found it. But uh, within the thousand, thousands of years of Portuguese, uh, sorry, of Brazilian civilization, uh, Portugal was, uh, had it, it within its empire for 315 years. And Brazil has been an independent country for 208 years now. So more, uh, the interesting thing here, of course, is that more often than not independent, but remembered massively for being a Portuguese community. And such was, I suppose, the, and I use the word advisedly, but such is the violence of colonialism, isn't it? That it, it makes such an impact because it is about mm -hmm. conquest mm -hmm. and resources mm -hmm. and money and, and what happens to people in the pursuit of those things. And that, that is why I guess it's so memorable and so difficult and um, such a, such an interesting subject as well as, as we're talking about this morning. So thank you for that bit of context there. Yeah. And that's the, that's the Portuguese view relationship with Brazil. You're also talking about the, the mm -hmm. within the Americas, there's another, another perception there. Did you want to expand on that as well? Well, um, uh, for, uh, from the American perspective, the Latinos, uh, that the idea of Latinos are really the Spanish speaking Latinos. When a, Brazilian lives in the US, I have lived in the US too, you kind of don't fit or there's something different about the Brazilians. I don't mean better or worse, it's just something different that we don't see ourselves as Latinos. And it um, has to do with the historical uh, distance between the Portuguese speaking and the Spanish speaking. So there is that there has yes. been um, uh, distance in the um, interchange about uh, from the Portuguese to the Spanish speaking. Many reasons that I, I explained uh, in the book, but there is a difference. There is a distance. And the, the identity of Latino, it kind of doesn't, we don't feel it suits us if, if I talk to other Brazilians, but it, it's just a, it's a, it's just uh, perceptions that we don't, we, don't, we don't feel included there, funnily. <laughs> that is interesting. But language, of course, is so profoundly important to people, isn't it? Because language is a reflection mm -hmm. of how we see the world. You know, we, yes, we... Uh, basically it's the language. But if, 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 if you think about a, a colony and uh, the colonizer relationship, you have the influx of the communication between Brazil and Portugal. Yeah. That this is one ex exchange of everything, yes. and another a, a, an, another flux is between the Spanish speaking and, and and Spain. So there was no reason why the Portuguese speaking uh, would talk to an um, Spanish speaking at that right. time in history. Yeah. This is why there was a, a big uh, cultural difference except uh, but, uh, the, the, uh, not only the language, but also this, how, how the so, uh, societies have been formed in uh, Latin America in relation to the colonies, uh, colonizers. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And is there um is there an indigenous Brazilian language that is still spoken in, in oh. any meaningful way? Oh, what well, that's a, such a beautiful question, Carl. I love to answer that because this is what I bring in my book. Uh, is because there the, there there has there is still in Brazil. Uh, I I don't know exactly the number, but it's like I don't know more than one hundred other languages is spoken in a small uh, in uh, in uh, in in indigenous eth ethnic groups. In Brazil, yeah. so the uh, I spend one chapter in my book just explaining how invisible the in, in indigenous people have become in Brazil, uh, uh, just because how they were integrated into the into this society. Uh, but it, yes, they have a huge influence. I mean, I have a mix of all blood in my in my. In sure. myself, I mean the, the indigenous, the African, and most people have, but people don't like to talk about. You know, they like to say, "Oh no, my family comes from um, Italy or Germany or even <laughs> Portugal," but I, uh, I I have nothing to do with indigenous Brazilians. <laughs> it's so fascinating, isn't it? I, know, I mean, I have some Far Eastern um, DNA as well, and it's the same there. This this kind of the prize of being European. Has become so such a theme, isn't it? In the last, well, I suppose since the Industrial Revolution and since the what has become Europe, what is culturally Europe, and how people mm. aspire to that is so fascinating. Mm. And what we've lost through that occurring as well. And this is, I mean, it's no wonder you wanted to write the book that you wrote because these these shorthands of language and communication, like Brazil or Brazilian. Mm says so much and leaves out so much at the same time as well, doesn't it? We we have to communicate like this, don't we, to really find mm -hmm. out what's going on in life and yeah. with our, with ourselves and with each other. Because these shorthands, you know, one little word to sum up millions of people and hundreds of years of culture mm -hmm. is just such a shortcoming. So, yes, please please carry on because I want to move towards um, the connection, uh, well, the uh, what it's like to be, um, a Brazilian here in Portugal now, if I may, because yes. that's a really important part of what we're trying to do with Good Morning Portugal yes. and, this, and a project we've got called the Portugal Immigrant Network to have yes. a great representation. You know, we're part, our community here doesn't represent very well the diversity of people coming to live in Portugal. And we are in this most fascinating time in Portuguese history, aren't we, where thousands of people, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are coming from different cultures to be in Portugal into that landscape we talked about before, where the Portuguese people are profoundly dissatisfied with how their society is being run and their levels of satisfaction. We're coming in. And I think it's vitally important that the that we understand each other's cultures and that we talk. And so can you do that for us from this Brazilian point of view of what it's like to be Brazilian in Portugal at the moment? Oh, well, uh, let's start with some numbers here. I think the, the there are... The, um, thirty percent of foreigners in Portugal are Brazilians. Wow, and that that's a big number. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. Of course, uh, most of us don't feel uh, uh, that we belong to any expat community, except right. me or a few people I know that have been, have lived abroad. But because it is a really a a immigration, and uh, we have about the same amount of Portuguese living in Brazil that we have of Brazilians living in Portugal. And the uh, reasons why Brazilians uh, have moved uh, to Portugal, of course, varies a lot. But as you mentioned, uh, the political um, uh, situation in Brazil the last few years, I mean, that, that has shaken again Brazil and many of us have chosen uh, to leave, but there there is also um, a, an idea that uh, uh, between Brazilians and, 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 and Portuguese is, is as I said there is this uh, historical heavy feeling. There is mm -hmm. even a, a word called lusophobia. Have you heard yes. about that? Yes. Well, I I haven't, but I can immediately understand. 
what, yes. what it's doing at. Yes. Yeah, yeah so it, I think we need a, a, a new um, time of understanding it, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, each other. At the moment, we should yeah, a bit leave behind what has happened to us and Brazilians live uh, living in Portugal. They do have a hard time in, in Portugal because the Portuguese uh, see us not as an expat. They see us as, um, as uh, you know, just uh, from the colony of Brazil, maybe. I don't know. No, but I they, understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we don't we don't get this attention as uh, you guys do in a sense. If you if I start speaking Portuguese now after two words, if I say bom dia, in my way of saying bom dia, that's it. They know I'm from Brazil, and the whole no. the whole um, interaction is different. But I I must say I am so happily surprised uh, uh, with the experience I have in Portugal. I think the, especially the younger generation of Portuguese are so kind and friendly and I never felt anything but uh, you know welcome um, really oh, that's wonderful to hear. yeah, yeah. They, of course the, the older generation they're a little bit hard hard um, in, in a it's sense the same I think, in the UK. No, no. it's the same in the UK and, and I do understand this distinction you've made which is a fascinating one for us other expat foreigner immigrants to understand for Brazilian people coming to Portugal it's it's not the same as being an expat American, is it, or Brit? This is part of the colonial past and the, and the long-standing relationship between the countries, mm -hmm. and it's not unlike the when people were welcomed or not into the UK uh, from the former colonies in the in the sixties and seventies. That was a very challenging time in some ways for for the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and certainly the, the people from you know India, the West Indies, um, were not, and the Far East were not seen as you know, immigrant or expat people coming in to, you know, make a new uh, uh, fortune, fame and fortune for themselves, mm -hmm. although some did. It was very much um, a m much more of a political and social mm -hmm. move, wasn't it, rather than a financial or entrepreneurial move, you could say. So that's a very interesting parallel from a, a UK point of view and something that clearly needs to be managed Sen sensitively and sympathetically mm -hmm. with with a, as you say the, the, the um the, i think the biggest group of people moving to portugal from from uh from outside of portugal are brazilian people that representation that community it, are there clear paths for representation mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. the relationship is um managed handled balanced mm -hmm. do you, are mm -hmm. there are there associations are there mm -hmm. um, organizations that, that look into that mm -hmm. and help people integrate successfully um i know of a few in, in uh, lisbon um carl but i think in general um brazilians are not very um good at um organizing ourselves especially abroad <laughs> Right. Um, it is a cultural thing uh, that that I'm I'm mentioning here, uh, uh, and where does that come from? Um, it comes from the fact that Brazil is a very complex society, and we have so yeah. many um, social levels. It's not only rich and poor. There are many, many, many levels in terms of social. Uh, economic structure on one side, and then yes. there is there are also uh, uh, quite many regional difference. So we have an, a vertical uh, yeah. complexity and we have a um, horizontal complex in terms of the various regions in Brazil because we're talking about a huge um, country here. So that complexity, if you think about people moving from Brazil abroad, they bring that with, with them. Of course they do. Of course so it's very, do. Yeah, it's very difficult to uh, unite uh, Brazilians because just by looking at each other, just by looking at, by listening to our Portuguese, we kind of know in this matrix of complexity Incredible. where people might fit. So yeah. can you imagine... Can you imagine uh, um, having this, uh, because it's not at, at all homogeneous. So how yeah, do right. you unify uh, a group that is not homogeneous from the beginning? So that's, that's a big challenge. So yeah, right. uh, I, don't, I don't find, especially here in Silver Coast, any uh, as, uh, association or, uh, of Brazilians that really work. I have 
myself tried a little bit, but we are dispersed. We try to mingle and become half Portuguese. And someone said to me, oh, Portugal, it's just a state of Brazil. <laughs> That's a, that was very funny, I thought. Because yeah. I mean, we, we try to handle the uh, language difference also in a way that we want to blend in. But of course, we don't. I mean, uh, um, if you come from the UK and go to the States, you don't change your English. You just go and go about your life with the English you have. And then uh, Brazilians, right. sometimes they want to kind of change their, their Portuguese to fit into the Portuguese society better and so on. It's an at attempt to integrate, uh, but it is a very complex. And so Brazil is not a melting pot in terms of culture, as people think. Interesting. It's, a, it's a very hard to mix um, society. Wow. Uh, Pete is saying uh, it's an amazing statement of identity. Brazil is one of the most ethnically diverse populations in the world. And that reflects and re uh, echoes what you're saying, there, doesn't it? For me, we all originated from 200 plus people that survived the Ice Age. That's an interesting uh, point of view there, Pete. Um, and uh, a really interesting comment for going back into the history of uh, Brazil and Portugal. Rio de Janeiro in Brazil was the capital of the Portuguese Empire for several mm -hmm. years during the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because the king was not a great leader, right? Just said, okay, well, we're going to go and base ourselves in Brazil now. We've got a nice place over there. That was a, a little bit of cowardly leadership, I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Colonialism on the whole was initiated when traders called in the military to protect their interests. For example, Africa went from 5% colonized in 1890 and five years later, 90%. Isn't that incredible? And like I said before, you know, the violence of that sudden change and what that means for people is quite extraordinary. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, Pete also saying, I love the fact that Rio was the capital of Portugal. I could never imagine that with the British Empire. Yes, uh, we're off to uh, Hong Kong because we don't like what's going on <laughs> at the moment or wherever. Uh, thank you for your kind words, T-Duck. Uh, excellent show today. Open my eyes. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much. D Ditto says, Sue's excellent topics covered today. Learning curve starting to bend a bit. Now, as we as we uh, conclude here, and, and I, again, I, I, so often is the case that, that we have such wonderful conversations here on Good Morning Portugal with such brilliant guests like yourself. Uh, I need to give you a key to the studio, Simone, so that you come back on a more regular basis and we can continue. I would this love to. <laughs> Thank you. Consider yourself part of the team. We do have a page over on our Good Morning Portugal website where we basically got the Portugal Immigrant Network. And Brazil, you might be pleased to see, is the first little profile we've done. Now... I'm not the right person to be writing this and grabbing information from around the internet. We'd love, we'd love you to be if in any way or put forward somebody who wants to be like our Brazilian uh, representative within our community, Simone. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but <laughs> if, we, if we could think about that, about how we can have you know representation from Brazilian the Brazilian community as diverse and uh, with with all that you said about it, not all Brazilians are the same. Like not any race is the same. You've got that. And that's where you come back to the stereotypes, interestingly, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's like, so let's organize a Portuguese awareness show. What should we talk about? How about football mm -hmm. and girls in small bikini? It, it all comes back to the stereotypes again, doesn't it? As reference points yeah. and yeah. capoeira yeah. and music. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, so we, we, we have that un uncomfortable balance to make, don't we, of like picking some of the mm -hmm. cultural icons and stereotypes. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as we've referenced ourselves, maybe broadening out like you've done so beautifully today for us and um, with your wonderful book. Uh, Joao de Nort and Bairandi, people coming in with comments again as we continue, um, as we conclude. 200 people that survived the Ice Age were geographically dispersed all over the globe, not ethnically in a single place. Joao de Nort and Pete, they're discussing that idea. Um, apparently, European Portuguese is changing more and more to Brazilian Portuguese. Bairandi says, I've noticed the local Brazilians here tend to speak Brazilian Portuguese to the local Portuguese, but the Venezuelans try to speak European Portuguese. Well, there, there's another show for us to do. Um, and the, the single continent of Pangaea was much longer before the Ice Age. Okay, well, that, there's another show. And I love the way, says um, Bairandi here, I love the way they try to keep their own identity. And that, I suppose, as a final note, uh, Simone, is the art form here, isn't it? Is in preserving your your the identity that you bring with you that you're proud of, whilst fitting in and contributing mm -hmm. to the country you've come to. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is such a beautiful dance. I, I, I mean, I'll use that stereotype if I may. <laughs> that, that, yeah. is, 
that's a, that's a dance, isn't it? Certainly between the Portuguese and the Brazilians. So, final words to you, then, if I may, mm -hmm. how you see the future of this integration and a continuation of the Portuguese Brazilian mm -hmm. relationship? What do you hope for? Yeah, I I hope for for us to learn really more about ourselves beyond these stereotypes. Uh, Brazilians have a, a bit of a also very um, limited. Uh, idea of the Portuguese, now the Portuguese who open a bakery, that's the idea uh, <laughs> in, in Brazil. And, and Portuguese, they, they also um, have uh, their, their ideas. But anyway, I hope for the future that we are better educated uh, about each other and there's more respect, uh, there's more um, a sense that we can contribute to it, uh, each other's future here because we need each other. Absolutely. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you can get uh, Simone's book on Amazon Deconstructing Brazil Beyond Carnival, uh, Soccer and Girls in Small Bikinis. Looking forward already to talking to you again soon, Simone. Have a great Thank day and a great week. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>